Hi guys, my name is Tristan. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I go over firearms, a little bit of medicine, and a little bit of outdoors. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. The things that you absolutely need to take to the range are your firearms. If you don't own any, you can rent some at some places. You could borrow your friends if you wanted to go with them. My firearms include the Smith & Wesson MP 2.0 Compact, which is all clear. You guys can see that here. We are clear, right? And this RPR, which is a Ruger Precision Rifle, which is also clear. You guys can see that. These are my two main firearms that I take to the range without fail every single time. This is a 223556 carbine, and then my Smith & Wesson MP 2.0 compact is chambered 9mm. They are pretty good weapons. I don't have anything wrong with them for the most part. The trigger on this weapon is a little bit squishy. That's the only thing I would really change about it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Next thing, since I work in private security and I often wear this vest as well as this belt, when I go to the range, I am pretty often wearing that vest and the belt. I like to train how I work. So other than building up certain skills and working new things in, then I'll train to that level where I can do it without all the gear on and then I'll start incorporating the gear a little bit more. But being able to have a good range belt, which this comes with two different belts that work in conjunction, the outer belt, which is what you guys are seeing here, is where all of my molly whatnot is mounted. So I have my magazine pouches for my 15 round magazines and I'll go over that here in a little bit. A little dump pouch for usually snacks, some Skittles or Oreos, and dare I say even crayons having been a Marine. My tourniquet pouch, my IFAC. Going around a little bit further, I've got my Safari Land ALS holster for the light so it just fits in. Just like that, it's pretty useful. You can pull it. Just like so. And a little bit further around, if I have to put on gloves for any reason, if I'm working around gra uh, glass or anything that's caustic, I could throw these on and it's gonna help protect or give me a barrier between that and uh, the environment around me. And like I said, a little dump pouch here. Going into my plate here also, this is the belt is from 511. Do I recommend 511? If you're starting out and you just want to get a decent belt for a relatively cheap, it's a great option. I think this was around $90 or $100. There's a lot better belts out there, but this is a fantastic place to start. Going into my main working plate carrier, this is the Agilite K19. This is a phenomenal plate carrier. I love this. It's so comfortable. The only major downside I can ever find is that if it's raining outside or it gets wet, it gets heavy. It's like very, very, very heavy very quickly. But it's got this pocket on top where I usually store the terms and the rules and regulations for the places that I work. It's been laminated, so I just stuff that in there. On the very front, I've got three magazine pouches, and I'll actually load this out for you here real quick. Just like so. Then I've got two magazine pouches on the area of the side here that fit my 23 round magazines pretty well. And I like that setup because having it everything flush like this, like this is the Agilite placard pouch. And in this, I usually just keep a flashlight, some broken down multi-tools, a Sharpie, and a little notepad. Yeah, but here's what it looks like when it's fully loaded out. That goes the other way. But it looks just like that. The back I keep flush. Because if I'm sitting down, I don't want anything making me uncomfortable. So the back is nice and flush. I got a radio pouch right here as well. Makes it easy. I can just feed it through right here. Now, let's go into my actual range bag. So in the range bag, when I want to do specific drills for specific purposes, i.e., let's say, draw from my duty belt or draw from concealment, this works pretty damn well. This is a T-Rex Arms holster, which is one of the few holsters I actually found that you can fit the Smith & Wesson MP 2.0 Compact into with the TLR1 light. This is one of the few options that I found among various holsters. I use this when uh, I'm just concealing, like I wore this today for a little bit when I was out and about. And it comes with a spot for, this is the wrong size magazine. I would never carry a 23 round mag because that just digs into your ribs, but it carries an extra spot for a spare mag if you want one, which is very, very helpful. The next magazine I have for concealment is a We The People holster, the Do Not Tread On Me pattern for my weapon without the light. When I'm carrying for longer trips, I will mount this on the inside of my car and 
just have it accessible to my right side. And then I also have a little pistol mag that I keep tucked into my door that's easily accessible if I need to get to it for any particular reason. Moving on from the holsters, another very important range day essential is your ear pro. This is probably number one other than your medical kit. You want to have very good ear pro. Peter, are you ready? <laughs> yeah, that's my ear pro. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear nothing now. You said what? <laughs> that was now whether you're using in the ear ear pro, I've seen a lot of different options come out over the last year. That's pretty damn cool. Uh, I prefer over the ear ear pro until it comes to actually working with a rifle because getting the cheek weld on this with a rifle It's not that great. I don't have a riser on my on my sight. So Getting my head down low enough or having to raise my rifle clear up here. It can be a little bit more difficult and uh, These definitely get in the way when you're trying to get some more precision style shots Like I couldn't shoot at the 300 because these were getting in the way uh, of getting a proper cheek weld on my rifle. So I'm probably gonna have to pick up some earplugs or something so I can work that out. But for just run and gun shooting or just pistol training, these are a very good option. They do come with the option to have like noise cancellation turned on and off. So that doesn't turn off the noise cancellation entirely. What it allows you to do is to be able to filter through and hear dialogue and conversation and things going on in the ambient, ambient uh, area around you. So you can turn this on and you can hear the conversations and keep up with what's going on. Another really cool feature I love about this set of Walker Razor Ear Pro is that there's a little, and I haven't used this yet, there's a little input down here where you can plug your phone in or plug in a mic or anything else, a radio, and you can hear the conversations going on over the air, or you can listen to your music while you're shooting, which I think is pretty damn cool. But ear pro is definitely one of the more important things you wanna have, because nobody wants to go deaf prematurely. Moving on from there, other than the three magazines I put in my plate carrier already, I also take a few extras, and I will generally shoot enough to have to replace all of my ammo at once, and more so recently, I have been toning down the amount of ammo I shoot, but I'll generally go out with like 100 rounds or 120, and I'll just do a bunch of reload drills or low ready to high ready, or low ready up, and then high ready punch out, and all different kinds of stuff. Some movement under fire, not so much right now. And yeah, I just like to have extra rifle magazines. Plus if I just wanna carry one rifle magazine and not like 16 different boxes of ammo, I can just feed out what I need from these and put it into the magazine that I want to use. I have another firearm in my safe that's not up here right now. That's an old Winchester 22 LR rifle. It's a great little plinking gun. It's meant for small game. It's been in my family for a really long time, so I've been going on like 50 or 60 years. But I do keep some extra 22 LR uh, ammo in here. I do take it out occasionally, my 22 LR rifle itself, but not so often because I don't want to break it and it's sentimental as hell to me. I just take it out probably twice a year just to make sure it still functions and I come back and clean it out as best as I can without actually having to completely disassemble it. Going into the front pocket, I've got a lot of uh, spent casings so I want to get into reloading so these are mainly just like trial and error uh, in a sense to see if I can figure it out as soon as I get the equipment needed. And then something that I think is really important, I'll staples. If you're putting up targets on wood or you don't have nails, staples are a huge must because it makes it so much easier to get a staple gun, just punch it through and you're good to go, like four or six of them at a time. And you can work that target for a little while, especially if you have an infinity target, which those are pretty expensive, but they're very worthwhile. I don't have one, I've seen them. I wanna get one eventually, but staples I think are a must. Let's go ahead and flip this bag around to give you guys the other side. So in the, in the front side, which is what's cut out here, I've got a cable lock. So I've got a, a, a lock on or a key on my actual keys, wherever they are. Whenever I'm not shooting my rifle and there are range rules, I will lock my rifle up. I will feed this through the magazine well and then out through where the bolt would be sitting if it was not in bolt lock or slide lock. And that will lock it up, make it in me unusable. But I do have 15 round magazines in here. I got three of them, so a total of 45 rounds if they are all fully loaded. That one's full, and that one's also full, so 45 rounds. Plus these two, that's 91, and then I have 92, the 92nd round on my other side. That is 
the majority of everything. And then just for shits and giggles, if I ever get stopped by somebody, it's like, why do you have so many guns or why do you have guns in your car or where are you going? I'm just going to hand them this and tell them to do their research. Uh, <laughs> I'd probably get myself a ticket, but it'd be humorous nonetheless. But I always like to, I picked this up the other day at Barnes and Noble because I want to do more research in the Constitution and some of the other papers written around it to become more educated American. Uh, more educated and American, cue bald eagle sound. So my toolkit is pretty light for the most part. Mostly consists of this drill some screws so if I need to jimmy rig a target stand together I can and some different screw head options there's a bunch of different options here you guys can check that out I got some Phillips heads some square heads uh, a couple different square heads octagon I don't know all of them I'm not a carpenter by any means and I'm barely no tools for that matter but I know enough to build something just mediocrely and then I got my staple gun here this is an old one, I think it was my grandmother's a while back, but does the job for the most part. Tape measure for measuring distances. Um, I got some little screwdrivers, just a miscellaneous small tool kit kind of set up. And that's, that's really everything. So to, to recap, we've gone over my firearms for what I take to the range. It's gonna be my AR platform and my Smith & Wesson. My gun belt my vest, my holsters, my ear pro. Other than the general stuff I take to the range, I also take some camera gear, obviously, for YouTube purposes and social media purposes, but I don't think you guys wanna to hear too much about that unless you do. In that case, I can do another video. Leave that in the comments below. Also, leave what you guys take or what you would recommend using in the sense of whatever you take to the, uh, to the range. What have you had good, feelings about what's been working well for you I really want to hear what you guys have to say and uh, if you guys enjoyed this video leave that thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one peace